This greeting means for those that have come for the first time, it means that the thought, word, and deed, I salute the divinity within you. For you are all divine, children of divinity, born of divinity, and forever divine. And why you do not recognize this divinity within you is such a puzzle to me. What comes in between is the machinations of your minds uh, swirling and twirling as in a whirlpool and forgetting the reality of yourself. Hmm? Jai Ram, Jai Ram, Jai Jai Ram. Jai Ram, Jai Ram, Jai Jai Ram. Jai Ram, Jai Ram, Jai Jai Ram. Jai Ram, Jai Ram, Jai Jai Ram, Ishvara Allah, Christos Tera Nam, Jai Ram, Jai Ram, Jai Jai Ram, 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 Jai Ram, Jai Ram, Jai Jai Ram. For those that have come for the first time, it means that we know our Lord, there's only one Lord. Some call him by Ishvara, some by Allah, some by Christos. But there's only one God, one divine energy. And yet, we call it by different names, don't we? And it is a differentiation of names that creates so much confusion in the world. Once people start realizing that there's only one God and we are led to that divinity within us, that kingdom of heaven within us, what more do you want? What greater wealth could you possess? What is far greater than to come to that realization that you are divine and the kingdom of heaven is within? Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven within and all else shall be added unto thee. They tell you to believe this. I tell you, do not believe. Because belief is a concept of the mind. Go beyond the concepts of the mind and experience that divinity within. And when you experience <coughs> that divinity within, you do not believe in God anymore. You become a living God. For God is not to be believed in, but God is to be lived. You start from belief. 
start from wherever you are. <coughs> if you are in Vancouver, hmm? start from Vancouver to go to New York. You can't go to New York without going through Vancouver. My plane flies from there. So let me start where I am, in belief. But let the belief become faith through experience that you could have in you, that you are forever. There, you, not you, little you, John, Jack, Jean, James, Jones. No. You are forever there. Permeating me. All the time. Every cell of my body, billions of them, are permeated by that essence, by that divinity. What more do you want in life? You're seeking for peace and happiness. We sit in our chapels, we sit in our churches, we sit in our mosques and synagogues, and we bargain, oh God, give me peace, oh God, give me this, oh God, give me that. doesn't work that way. Become it. It, it, it. And I've said to you throughout this week that it is not he and neither she. It's a neutral force, that force of divine energy that permeates everything that flows through these hands of mine, that flows through this heart of mine, that flows through these weak limbs of mine. For he is ever there. And that, when you find that, that is ever there, you will know what self-realization is, what God-realization is. But I am not going to be impatient. Lead thou me on kindly light, one step at a time. Ah, kindly light. That is the secret, not leading me on, but the kindly light is the secret. Because that light is forever kindly. But you do not want to recognize the kindliness of that which is so kind keeping you breathing and alive. That is life. Otherwise, we are not living, my children. You are not living. You are just passing time. You are just existing. But when you feel the glow of the light within you, hmm? next, uh, what's friendship? What is friendship? What is friendship? What's in a name? What's in a name? Forgiveness. Hmm. Beautiful. Can you speak about being? 
being. Ah, wonderful. You see him. <laughs> being is beingness. Beingness is to be. Most people in their lives imagine themselves to be what they wish to imagine, but they never are. And they do not recognize that being which they are. For once the recognition of being comes into one's life, that realization comes, then you just are. No pretenses, no wiles, no guiles, nothing. You just are. That is beingness. That is being. Now, to be is to give. You are totally incapable of forgiving. You cannot forgive because that for precedes the giving. Give. Do not forgive. Just give. And the forgiveness would just disappear. For what is there to forgive? Who are you to forgive anything or anyone? Only he gives and never forgives. For the word for negates the very essence of giving. And when you give of yourself, you find that friendship that is so close. Friendship does not depend upon what he could give or she could give. Friendship depends upon oneself. I am your friend, and that is all which I am concerned about. And may I always pray for that ship, which I could call a friend, to take me across the waters of life. So, relationships and friendships begin with one's self. For nothing else exists in this world for you until you have transcended your mind. Because your mind is filled with attachment and only when you reach the stage of the impersonal would all these attachments disappear and melt away. And then you will experience yourself as that eternal consciousness. And that eternal consciousness never changes. It is the doubting mind that asks these questions, and we do need doubting Thomases in this world. Otherwise, this world will not go around. And the more you doubt, the more will your world go round and round and round and around because 
you have not experienced God. And when you experience that divinity, all doubts disappear. For there is only one consciousness, one consciousness only, that permeates everyone and more so expressed through the body of a Buddha or a Krishna or a Christ that has experienced the totality of consciousness. I've said this to you or at other places, I've done thousands of lectures I can't remember where I spoke what. Hmm? But the consciousness is one. There's only one consciousness. There can never be two consciousnesses. And that consciousness is permeating each and every one sitting here. Call it Krishna consciousness, Buddha consciousness, Christ consciousness, or what? ever consciousness. It depends how much your mind has been opened. The ordinary person to repeat to you again and again uses five to eight percent of his consciousness while billions of cells are lying dormant, dead, sleeping, unawakened. So the questioner that questions is dead, sleeping, and without any knowledge of consciousness. 